Cam Jansen and the Mystery of the Stolen Diamonds, Chapters 5 and 6. And just a warning, a lot happens in these chapters. Chapter 5. Cam and Eric quickly went out the Lee Avenue exit, the same one the man had gone through a few minutes earlier. It led to a street crowded with shoppers leaving the mall. Do you see him? Eric asked. I think so. I think that's him up ahead. He's starting to walk down Lee Avenue. Cam and Eric tried to get through the crowd quickly. With a baby carriage, it wasn't easy. They brushed past a woman carrying a few large packages. She lost her balance and one of the packages fell. What do you think that is? she yelled, pointing to the carriage. A hot rod? Eric picked up the package. I'm sorry, he told the woman. You should be, running through here like that. I... Hope you don't have a baby in there. Eric was about to tell her that there was a baby in the carriage. Cam didn't let him. Come on, she urged, or we'll lose the man. They rushed ahead. They turned the corner onto Lee Avenue and saw the man halfway down the block. Let's not get too close, Eric warned Cam, or he'll know we're following him. They were careful to keep a good distance behind the man. It didn't help. When the man reached the corner, he turned and looked straight at them. He saw us, Eric whispered. What should we do? Keep walking. If we stop whenever he does, he'll know we're following him. The man stood still and waited. After Cam and Eric pushed the baby carriage past him, he turned and walked down Minnow Road. Cam and Eric kept walking until the man was out of sight. Then they turned back and walked to the corner of Minnow Road. The street was filled with construction equipment and huge mounds of dirt. A row of old houses was being torn down. Cam and Eric saw the man walk into the last house at the far end of the street. It's almost twelve, Eric said. My mother will be waiting. Let's go back and call the police. And what would we tell them? If those women and Mr. Parker are right, we're following an innocent man. As soon as we know something, we'll call. Cam crouched and made her way down the street. Come on, she called in a loud whisper. Eric crouched, too, as he pushed Howie's carriage and followed Cam. There were piles of dirt and sand all along the sidewalk. When they were behind a huge mound of dirt in front of the last house, Cam collapsed. We made it, she said. What do we do now? Let's see what's going on inside that house. Cam and Eric started to crawl up the dirt pile. Then Eric stopped. Howie was no longer sleeping. He was beginning to move in his carriage. Keep him quiet, Cam whispered. I'll try. You better do more than try. If he cries, we're in real trouble. Eric rocked the carriage gently. Howie looked up at Eric, but he didn't cry. Cam reached the top of the dirt pile. She had a good view of the old house. It was three stories high, with rows of windows. Some of the windows were broken. There were no curtains or shades. Cam could see right inside. Through a large window on the first floor, she saw the man they had followed. He wasn't alone. The couple who had left the jewelry store just after the robbery was there, too. Cam quickly crawled down the hill. I was right. Eric. Shh. Eric pointed to Howie. I think he's going back to sleep. 
They're all in there, Cam whispered. The runner and the couple we saw leaving the store. They're all working together. The runner made all that commotion to keep the police from catching the real thief. What about the woman and the baby? Maybe they figured no one would suspect a man who went shopping with his wife and baby. If they did, they were right. You saw what happened when they left the store. They just walked away, and almost no one noticed. Let's go back now, Eric urged, and get the police. You go, Cam told him, and hurry. I'll stay here and watch the house. Watch Howie, too. I can move faster without him. Eric ran off before Cam could tell him she didn't know how to watch a baby. Cam sat back against the pile of dirt and waited. It was very quiet. Cam looked around. Then she saw why it was so quiet. There were barriers at both ends of the street. Because houses were being torn down, cars were not allowed on Minnow Road. Cam realized that she and Howie were alone. The only other people nearby were the thieves. I hope Eric hurries, Cam thought. Whoosh! Something dropped to the ground. Cam looked up. A squirrel running along the branch of a tree had dropped an acorn. Howie started to cry. Oh no, Cam thought. What would Eric do? Cam said, click. Sometimes just saying it helped her remember. It did. Cam remembered the insulated bag and that Howie couldn't drink milk and cry at the same time. She took the bottle out of the bag. Then Cam heard another noise. She dropped the bottle and looked up. This time, it wasn't a squirrel. Number one. What did Cam and Eric do when the man they were following stopped and looked at them? Number two. How did Eric keep Howie quiet while they were spying through the window at the man and couple? Number three, what made Howie cry after Eric left to go get the police? Chapter six, a big tall man was standing on top of the mound of dirt. He was wearing an ugly green tie and had a mustache that curled up at the ends. It was the runner. Well, he growled, look what we have here, the babysitter and her baby. Where's your friend? He, he went home. If you were smart, you would have done the same thing. Let's go. Cam carried Howie up the front steps of the house. Inside, the house was musty. The floor was covered with dust and littered with old newspapers and magazines. The runner took Cam and Howie into a large room. Look what I got, the runner said. It's one of the kids I saw following me. A man and a woman looked up. It was the couple Cam had seen leaving Parker's jewelry store. They were sitting in worn, old-fashioned easy chairs. There was a small table between them. You said there were two of them, the sitting man snapped. Where's the other one? He wasn't out there, the runner said. Great. Everything was perfect until you let yourself get followed. Well, watch this kid. Don't let her get away. 
The runner nudged Cam and Howie into a corner. He stood there watching them. Cam looked at the thieves and was frightened. Let's divide this stuff and get out of here, the sitting man said. He took a large baby rattle out of his pocket. It was the rattle he was carrying as he left the store. He screwed off the top and carefully emptied the contents onto the table. Wow, the woman said. That was exactly how Cam felt. The rattle was filled with diamonds. They sparkled as the man started to count them. One, two, three. Cam held Howie close and looked around the room. In the back, pulled away from the wall, were a few large bookcases. There were windows behind the bookcases, and there was an open door, which led to another room. Cam looked at the thieves. Something was missing. She whispered, click, and tried to remember what it was. The baby, she thought. Where's the baby? Then Cam noticed something on the floor wrapped in a pink blanket. It was a large doll. Cam realized that there never was a baby. That's why the couple hadn't been carrying any of the things Eric's mother packed in the insulated bag. The thieves had taken the doll along so they would look like a family, and the rattle was a good place to hide the diamonds. The man was still counting. Fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty. Cam looked at her watch. It was twelve-thirty. Where's Eric? she thought. Maybe he can't get the police to come. Seventy-nine, eighty, eighty-one. We got eighty-one diamonds, the man announced. Let's see now, he said as he did some figuring on an old newspaper. That's eighty-one divided by three. Hmm, that gives each of us twenty-one. That, no, that's not right. He did some more figuring. Twenty-seven, the woman said. We each get twenty-seven. The runner left Cam's side and went to get his diamonds. I can't wait for Eric, Cam thought. This is my chance. She held Howie tight and ran to the door in the back of the room. She slammed the door shut as if she were leaving the room. Then she jumped behind the nearest bookcase. Get her! Someone yelled. Cam hoped her trick would work. She couldn't see what was happening, but she heard doors opening and closing and a lot of yelling. Find her! I'm looking! Check the back room! The trick did work. The thieves thought she had left the room. They were looking all over the house for her. Cam knew she couldn't stay behind that bookcase forever. Eventually, the thieves would find her. She looked at Howie. His eyes were open. Or you might cry, Cam thought. There was a window behind the bookcase. Cam tried to open it. She couldn't. It was jammed. The window behind the next bookcase was open, but to get to it, Cam would have to run past the large open area. Cam didn't know if anyone else was in the room. She was afraid to run out in the open. Someone ran past the bookcase. What about the kitchen? I've already looked there. Look again! Howie began to stir. Oh no, Cam thought. He's getting ready to cry. Okay. Chapter 6 questions. Number 1. What was inside the baby rattle? Number 2. How did Cam trick the thieves while they were counting the diamonds? Number 3. Why was Cam worried about Howie crying? Number 
to be continued.